All right, now I can hear you guys. Ah, there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, welcome to the 19 Minute Podcast. Welcome to week four of the New York Sports Nation podcast, coming to you from the PIX11 Sports Department, high above 42nd Street in the heart of New York City. I'm your host, Todd Ehrlich, the executive producer of the PIX11 Sports Department. We are joined by the all-stars of Big Apple Ball. Todd, we have a 19-minute podcast. We don't have time for the superlatives today. We got to get to it. Okay, but here's the point, guys. If you do not (laughs) big up your guests, they do not come back. It doesn't get bigger than Kerry Kittles and John Wallace. That's what I'm saying. Come on, let's go. I'm not there yet. And I was just about to plug your show. I wanted to plug your show. Todd's intro is about 19 minutes long, so I'll take care of the entire podcast. (laughs) As I was saying, don't forget to tune in to Moose and Joe on Big Apple Ball, Thursday night, 6.30. By the way, the great Albert King is on. And don't forget to review us, which Joe makes me do on Spotify. Remember what my mom always says, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. Just go to Spotify and rate her son's podcast very highly and leave a comment while you're there. All right, back to our cast of thousands covering the New York Knickerbockers on this podcast and Big Apple Ball, the number one draft pick from 1996, the man that led Syracuse on the magical run to the final four in 95, the great John Wallace. Yeah, there you go. Better, Moose. The pride of the current (laughs) Big champions from the Villanova Wildcats, the pride of Big Apple Ball, Carrie Kittles. Like my very 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 favorite sports casting animal <laughs> if i could get one for my son i'd get a stuffed moose mark malusis yay <laughs> obviously well above average no average joe joe Masseri, and the rundown on today's show in the next 17 minutes john wallace knows what it takes to lead the team on a magical run we'll get his thoughts on saint peter's carrie knows what it takes to lead a team on a magical NBA run, as he did in 2002-2003. We'll get from him what it takes for the Nets to make it all the way. Maybe we'll have a couple of laughs as well. All right, let's start with the Nets. The season ended today. It's the same as last week and may end up being that way, where the Nets go to Toronto. This week against Utah, the Nets showed they could win without Ben and Kyrie. What is your take uh, right now, Kerry Kittles, if they do face Toronto in the first round? Wow, that that would be a tough task to go to Toronto and and, and, uh, to win that game without Kyrie Irving. Obviously, Ben Simmons is questionable as as well with his back. Um, I don't know. I I think it would be a, a, a very close game, especially with Kevin Durant in the lineup and the way he's playing right now. And the way that the supporting cast has been committed to supporting him, uh, Bruce Brown in particular, with his energy on both ends of the court, and when Seth Seth Curry is healthy and he's in the lineup, he's proven to be a, a, a secondary complementary scorer to Kevin Durant. But Toronto's been playing great all year, and, and they play really well at home. It's a tough environment to, to win in, and it will be a very close game. Kerry, are you surprised at how Seth Curry has stepped up and become such a scorer here with the Nets? No, I'm not. He was showing that with the Sixers as of late, before he got traded. I mean, he was showing, even last year, signs that he's just not a spot-up shooter. He's a lot more than that. He can put the ball on the floor and get to his spots and and, and shoot the ball with confidence. And, and, and yeah, I mean, he's really been playing with a lot of confidence, and, and, and the Nets need him in the lineup. Kerry, what do you make of, you know, Durant, you know, talking about Kyrie and obviously Simmons, the injury, talking about it, you know, when he mentioned to the media – uh, about the championship window for the Brooklyn Nets extends past this year. Kind of a little bit of a, a change in the mindset about the expectations from this year from their best player? Kevin Durant is just different. I mean, is he is he just as honest as can be? We've never seen a person just just tell it like it is to the media exactly how he feels. Like, hey, guys, I signed a, I signed a long-term deal. I'm going to be here for years to come. This year is important to me. We're focusing on trying to maximize what we can out of this season with all these undue circumstances. However, I'm going to be here for a while. So pump the brakes. Just know 
that Ben Simmons back is going to get healthy eventually, and he's going to rejoin the team. And eventually, Kyrie will be a full-time employee. So the long-term future looks great for the Nets after hearing what he said the other night. However, this season was the chance for the Nets to really advance and come out the East. And, and, and there's been too many things that have come into play, too many distractions and too many decisions and, and the injuries and COVID. But this team has what it takes to come out the East this year. It's just unfortunate that, you know, they've been dealt these cards. From a psychological standpoint and from a team leadership standpoint, should Nash start getting the Nets psyched up and ready to play without Ben Simmons? Then if he shows up, great, it's a bonus. But at this point, we keep waiting for him to come back, waiting for him to come back. And like you said, a back is a tricky thing, and you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't really think they're banking on him to come back this year. I mean, I know he said that they're still open, and we, we will welcome him back with open arms whenever that time comes because he's just that good of a player. But I think this team is really – you watched how they played the last couple of games. They're showing up their playoff rotations. You're not seeing the rookies as much, right? You know, you're, you're seeing – Drummond in, you're seeing Claxton in. Now, Drummond was out, so we saw a little bit more of Blake Griffin. But their, their playoff roster and, and their rotations are, is pretty much set. And, and if Ben Simmons come back, that's icing on the cake. But, guys, they have to play with what they have right now. It, it's, it's not quite a pickup game, as Drummond alluded to. It's a, little <laughs> bit, it's a little bit more than that. But, yeah, I mean, they have to play with the purpose right now with the guys they have in the lineup. Have you, have you ever seen a team, though, that has been as, I'll call it, snake-bitten as the Nets have this season? Because we mentioned Seth Curry earlier, and just when it feels like he's starting to roll, he, he turns started. his ankle, yeah. right? And obviously, I mean, it's next man up. But Bruce Brown, who is the ultimate optimist, I feel like, in that locker room, he seemed like it's starting to get to him a little bit. I, I haven't seen it, guys. I mean, yeah. we, we saw the – we saw the – uh the disruption from COVID last year and the year before, but we have not seen what this Nets team has, has faced between COVID, obviously, and the and the vaccination status of Kyrie Irving and the injuries and the rotations. I mean, guys, remember in December, late December, it was KD and four rookies out there at one time. <laughs> we were watching like like guys coming in from 10-day contracts and, and guys they were signing and then getting rid of guys and sending them back to the G League. I mean, <laughs> this Nets team has been through a lot. But, I mean, let's, let's be honest. They do have a roster to get them out of the East or definitely to compete with the better teams in the East in the playoffs. It's just really unfortunate that they've had to deal with what they have to dealt with. Well, they dealt with all that, Kerry. So, realistically, looking at this team, do you think this is a championship team? I mean, listen, Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson in 1991, <laughs> right? Oh, I, get I, it, mean, I watched I mean, that I, fight. That was I, a great I, fight. I, I, Miracles I, I, Tokyo I, in Tokyo. I get exactly. it. Exactly. One of the all-time so, great upsets. Now you're looking at So Nets miracles team. can't happen. Miracles but I mean, can happen. In all honesty, no, this team, I can't see it. I mean, honestly, I mean, you're talking about the best scorer in today's game, Kevin Durant. I mean, I know LeBron's on the hot streak right now, but no. Durant's the best scorer in the league. And Kyrie, when he's in the lineup, yes, Kyrie is great. But to come out the East after all of this, I mean, no. I think Kyrie everybody. was pretty skilled, Kerry. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> I'm sorry, say it again? I said, I don't know if you heard that Kyrie's pretty skilled, but I listened to last week's podcast. You got me convinced. No, he, he's, he's definitely skilled, but I mean, he's only, he's only a part-time employee as of now, so I, I just don't see it happening. I know Todd likes to play the eternal optimist, so I'll say this. What is going for the Nets, every time they play – a team that we expect to be a championship contender, they seem to rise to the occasion. We know about teams playing up and down to the competition. I mean, they barely squeaked by Portland, a team that was getting blown out when they faced everybody, but they blew out Philly in Philly still. They beat Utah the other night, who is one of the best teams in the league. I know it was off a of back-to-back with the Knicks, but they can still play with anybody out there. When you have Kevin Durant, you have a chance. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I mean, he's, he's just that times of a player, guys. I mean, and when he's locked in like that, you can't contest his shot. He gets to his spots. He's playing, you know, he's, he's making the right decisions. He's plays with his teammates. He's not, he's not, you know, totally selfish. But, I mean, when he's in the lineup, the Nets are definitely in the ball game. But, I mean, look at what Boston's doing this year. Look oh. at how Miami's been able to play and, and how deep Miami is. <laughs> and, and, and then you can't count out the Bucks, obviously. I mean, so it's just a tough task for the Nets. As much as I love Durant and what he does, in, in a seven-game series, it's just not going to happen, guys. 
John, you know the East as well as anybody. You broadcast Nick games. What is your take? How far can the Nets go? What's a realistic expectation for them in this playoff run? Well, like like Harry was saying, when you when you have the absolute best player on the court, you always have a chance. Um, you know that's so he's always going to be the best player on the floor. So no, regardless of who they play, um, even they were shorthanded last year against the eventual NBA champs in the Bucks. Uh, KD basically by himself took them to the brink. Ooh, so I mean, that big toe, he, John. Yeah, yeah, I know that 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 left big toe, but left you, know, big you just got to keep that in mind. You got to keep that in mind that you know KD is the best player in the league. He's good enough to to get his team over any to over any hump, whether it's a one game, uh, playing game, playing series, or whether it's a uh, seven game series. You know. You, you can't bet against the Nets whether they have uh, Ben Simmons or Kyrie because KD, KD is that good. With that being said, the East is so much better this year. Um, it's just going to be to, to try to get through that gauntlet without his, his, his other stars that he can rely on. So when he does have off nights, that, you know, that's, that's what makes championship team. It's not, you know, you know what you're going to get from the, the stars, but it's the, it's the ancillary play, players that show up in the big moments for you. And I don't know if those guys are going to be able to do that for KD enough to get him all the way to the to the promised land. John, I want to ask you a question about the Knicks, not whether or not they're in the play or can go on a run here or anything like that, or even Trey's 45 on Tuesday night at the guard. I want to ask you about Randall, not stay or go. More about the perception of Julius Randall right now as compared to last year. Last year, he was a you know, foundation, we here, lovable guy. You know, he's had an up and down year production-wise on the court. But he's also, you know, been kind of tough to handle, uh, whether it be the thumbs down to the fans, whether it be getting the suspension, getting into it with players on the court, the, you know, pushing away an assistance, uh, you know, laptop on the bench out there in Los Angeles. What's the reality here, the perception, the reality for the Nick fan about that, about what Julius Randle, the personality and what he is as a player here for the Knicks moving forward? What are you just seeing a player who was a little frustrated this year that they weren't as successful as he wanted them to be? There was uh, definitely parts, uh, earlier parts of the year where he wasn't playing as, as good as he would like to have, I'm sure. But there was, you know, like I, was, like I say the last week and then weeks before, these last couple, you know, month, two months or whatever, he's been playing really good basketball. And you, you're just seeing a competitive nature. He, you know, he's, it comes out sometimes in the wrong way, whether it's the coach slapping this away or thumbs down. He just wants to compete, and and it's tough as a as a as a player when you don't have all the necessary pieces um, sometimes to compete at the, at, at a high level. So, John, uh, those that look level. at Randall, I don't mean to interrupt you, John, but those that look at Randall as being part of the problem now for the Knicks, you don't believe that? No. Well, why why is he a problem? Because he's well, the, average well, what he's this, average because well not just the production of what he is on the court right so they're looking at last year as being an outlier but then looking at his personality this year and being like well he's so far different than where he was a year ago where he was really the most recognizable nick and and there are a lot of nick fans that have kind of soured on him john no he just got to make the, the the necessary adjustment that's what the, the really good players do uh teams have made the adjustments on him and he started to make those adjustments late in the year. That's why he's playing better. But that, that's all it was. Early in the year, teams made the adjustment on him. Uh, defensive adjustments, trying to force him more right, trying to make him more of a passer out of the double team off the dribble. And those are just things, area, areas of the game that he's going to continue to have to improve on to take his game to the next level. That's what the stars do. You keep adding to your game every, every summer, every offseason. You, you go in with a focus as to what you want to work on, what you want to get better at watch a lot of film and you, and you, and you make sure you get better in the areas that you are um, not as strong in the week, the season before. So John, last off season, the Knicks were looking at Derek Rose and Kemba Walker uh, to run the show. Do you expect either, neither or both to be back? And if not them, obviously it's a gaping hole at point guard. Who do you expect to run the show for the New York Knickerbockers? Well, that, I, I, I mean, I, I hope, uh, Derrick Rose gets healthy. Not sure what's going on with him, and I hope Kimba gets healthy because obviously he's not a hundred percent. Or you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure why he had to shut it down. But those, you know, both guys are seasoned vets. 
Uh, and, you know, in terms of whether they come back or not, I have, you know, that's that's for Leon Rose and those guys to the, discuss and determine. We, you know, last last we saw of Derrick Rose, he was playing at a really uh, e- efficient high clip. And there was definitely parts of the season this year where Kemba Walker was playing really good basketball. So just no matter how long can he sustain that, you know, um, is, is his knees going to get healthier? Is his body, you know, it's always an availability issue, right? Because your best ability is availability. So, you know, just a matter of, you know, both of those guys becoming healthy so they can contribute on a nightly basis. So, John, let me let me take it down a notch. Let me downshift to the NCAA tournament and the St. Peter Peacocks. Look, you know what it takes to make a long run um, in the tournament and to dance all the way to the last game. Do you see that sort of magic in St. Peter's? Can they win another game or two? and get to a final four. Yeah, it's going to be tough for them because they're, <clears throat> they don't like harder, you know, the grit, you know, all that they have in abundance. Um, I'm just and not sure about their Come on now. <laughs> yeah, but they're, you know, their size. I'm worried about their size. And, you know, as you start to get, you know, the the, the, the bigger teams they'll face, um, the, the next, the next game is going to be, you know, if they're able to get by, they play Purdue next, right? Yeah. Yep. They got seven Purdue's, center. It's a mess. Yeah. The so big Purdue's 10, the they're size. all beasts there, like my turtles. <laughs> so you got to either use your speed against that size to try to wear them down. But if they're not able, you know, the offensive, you know, rebounds, second chance points, you know, it's just going to make it tougher for St. Peter's. But, you know, you, you can't count them out because they've gotten this far. And, you know, you love to basically pull for the underdog at this point because, um, it's amazing that a 15 seed is in a um, sweet 16. John, when you were going on the run with Syracuse there, was it in the middle of it? Did you realize what you guys were doing? And I mean, does the thought of this could end at any moment even enter your mind when you're making a run like that? No, you don't ever want it to end. Uh, that's your whole mindset. That's what you're telling your teammates to give it, give it all because you don't want you don't want your career to be over. That's really as a senior. When you're making that kind of run, you don't want it to end because, you know, it's the last game that you'll ever play in college. So you want to stave that last game off as long as possible. And, and if it happens in a championship game, then, you know, then you just let the chips fall where they may. But, you know, during the run, you're just trying to prolong the season, get another game. You don't want your career to end. You know, you, you want to give your all. You don't have any regrets. You want to leave everything on the floor. And I, and I feel like that's what I did. Yeah, and then and John, when you got Al McGuire dancing after one of your wins, you know what? It's a pretty good. Run. It's, it's a, a good pretty... run, John. No it's a good run. No so I want I, I want to end on this. I got a minute left before we lose Carrie Kittles, the great Carrie Kittles. Um, as Joe says, I'm an optimist. Okay, I want you to insert a little optimism. You led your two net teams on some magical runs to the NBA Finals. You personally know what it takes to get there. You know what the expectations for the Nets were at the beginning of the season. What can we look for in that team to see, hey, maybe they're taking that step towards a magical run, Kerry Kittles. Leave us on an optimistic note, please. I said about the Nets. About the Nets. About the Nets. Well, listen, I mean, you saw that game against Utah, right? And so you saw Yeah, I mean, you saw a a Nets team without Ben or Kyrie. Without Ben or Curry, great, great Utah team. Keep going. And they Preach didn't have the Seth, they didn't have Seth Curry. They didn't have no. right. So, so listen, the, the Nets are are you know collectively they have what it takes to compete. It's just a, a, in a seven game series in the playoffs, which I'm concerned about. But yeah, I think no, you're not concerned. On any given night, on any given <laughs> night, that's what I'm compete. saying. <laughs> one game at a time. One game, one, a one game at a time. And we'll see. On one any given time, night. <laughs> one game. Next fans, you heard it here. Kerry Kittle said on any given night, nobody's a bigger net insider than Kerry Kittles. Nobody knows basketball like Kerry John, Masseri, and the Moose. Gentlemen, thank you all very much. We hit our hard stop. Exactly on the dime. Okay, we appreciate you, John. We appreciate you. And listeners, we appreciate you. Have a good day. Drive safely out there, everybody.